This is a production of PBS Charlotte. Nineteen twenty nine, the Great Depression uh, blew everything else out of the water. No one had experienced that type of near complete collapse of our economic system. No one knew how to get out of this Great Depression. But in 1933, with the new president sworn in, things started to change. In the United States, uh, we go out and put these programs together to go out and offer hope to people who are just chronically unemployed. There's so many different agencies, CCC, WPA, PWA, that it gets very confusing. And you can just refer to them all as the alphabet soup agencies. Using public work projects, these agencies employed millions around the country, including here in the Carolinas. It's estimated that there were a total of almost 75,000 people that participated just in CCC camps in North Carolina. In the next 30 minutes, we'll explore the lasting legacy of the New Deal work programs in our region, meet those preserving the history, and learn about a modern twist on the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC. All that next on A Trail of History. The following episode of Trail of History is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Bragg Financial Advisors, a family-owned wealth management firm providing investment management and tax and estate planning for families, individuals, and institutions for more than 50 years, committed to our clients, to education, and our community. After World War I, Americans embraced the Roaring Twenties and prosperity seemed abundant. Cars rolled off assembly lines in Detroit, women had the right to vote, and people danced to Charleston. But something radical loomed on the horizon that would change the country in unimaginable ways. Hi, I'm Gary Ritter, and welcome to A Trail of History. On October 29, 1929, the stock market crashed and the Roaring Twenties came to a screeching halt. Black Tuesday, as it's come to be known, marked the beginning of the Great Depression. In the 19th century, the U.S. economy had ex uh, experienced plenty of boom and bust cycles and inflation and bank failings, etc. So, you know, economic hardship and economic uncertainty were, were not foreign to, to Americans. Uh, they'd had plenty of, of recessions. But there were warning signs of something much worse down the road. While post-World War I American industry boomed and stock market investors felt invincible, the American farmers were hurting. One example. After the war, cotton prices went from about 30 cents a pound down to about 11 or 12 cents a pound, and then eventually by 1930 down to about 7 cents a pound, so that no one could make a living anymore being a farmer. But by the time we get 1929, when the Great Depression starts, uh, unemployment and all the things that went along with that, North Carolina and South Carolina had already been in a recession for probably three or four years. According to historian Mike Baxter, young working age Americans took the brunt of the economic collapse. The Depression was causing huge amounts of unemployment, in particular for young people. Uh, it's estimated that almost 60% of the people who were in their, in their teens and early 20s were unemployed, couldn't find jobs anyplace. This hopelessness went out and really caused a lot of people to question whether the capitalist model was actually going to go out and continue to work in the United States. In 1931, it got to the point where one out of every four people uh, is in some form or fashion on some type of recovery, some type of, uh, we won't call it unemployment insurance because that didn't exist yet, but they were in some way, shape or form getting help. One of the things that we see during this time frame is that no one knew how to get out of this Great Depression. In 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt won the presidency on the promise of a new deal for the American people. In the United States, uh, we go out and put these programs together to go out and offer hope to people who are just chronically unemployed. Uh, in particular, the CCC was put together to go out and provide jobs for young people. 
uh, normally 16 to 22 years old. FDR's administration set out to reset the American economy using both congressional acts and executive orders. New Deal era programs involving banking reform, new tax policy, and social security all stand out. But it's the public works programs, such as the Civilian Conservation Corps and Works Project Administration that left the legacy of parks, public buildings, improved transportation, and environmental stewardship. That's a girl. At Kings Mountain State Park in York County, South Carolina. This is Melody. Melody is a nine-year-old Tennessee walking horse. Equestrian enthusiast Janet Baxter saddles up her horse. That's a girl. All in an effort to escape the daily rat race. It's my passion, but it's also so freeing. I drive back and forth into Charlotte. I work in an office. I work behind a computer all the time. To be able to ride my horse on a trail, to be able to experience uh, this, the freedom of being on the trail is just emotionally wonderful for me. So Baxter and her friend, Linda Farris, guide their horses into the woods and onto the park's newest equestrian trail. They're members of Friends of Kings Mountain State Park, a volunteer group instrumental in building the new trail. Opened in 2016, it links the park of today with a piece of Depression-era history. What's very interesting about Kings Mountain State Park is that we are one of a few parks in South Carolina that has remnants of the original CCC camps. You guys are going to measure it. And I just... But it was those remnants that presented a challenge to the volunteers and Baxter's husband, historian Mike Baxter. Normally, I do Revolutionary War archaeology, and I would normally be out in the woods someplace in a Revolutionary War site looking for, you know, shot and, and uh, ordnance and, and where different battles were and where the British were and where the American lines were, all that good kind of stuff. But in order to build the 17 miles of trails, we had to go out and determine where the CCC camp was because this is a national, it's on the National Historic Register, so you can't actually run trails through here and you can't go out and run horse things through here. So because my wife wanted 17 miles of equestrian trails, I was asked to go out and determine where this was and then go out and make sure that when we put the trails through that we didn't go through the CCC camp itself. He enlisted students from area colleges and universities to get the job done. Today I have four students from UNCC. They're all interested in archaeology. On this sweltering summer day, Baxter's team traversed a remote area of Kings Mountain State Park to explore the CCC camp ruins and collect additional data. What they're learning is to do a site survey. They're going out and finding the remains of what the camp was, where it is. They're gonna learn some different techniques. Hopefully they won't get lost in the woods and they will go out and learn how to go out and do this, not in a formal sense, not with somebody standing over them, not with a professor telling them what to do. UNCC graduate student Rebecca Buff and undergrad Quinn Whittington signed up to help. It's a lot of work for just one person, and the more resources uh, you can gather, the more information you can gather. We are trying to map the area. We're doing a survey of the land. I'm trying to find different buildings, and once we find those, we gather GPS coordinates so we're able to come back and find out more information. It's challenging work and gives each student real-world experience, but it's not without risk. It's hot <laughs> and it's, it's very wooded. Um, it's kind of hard to move around. It's also very, there are a lot of leaves on the ground so it's really hard to see anything. You kind of have to clear things with your feet and put on gloves to clear with your hands. So if we find anything, we put a little flag in, we map it, um, take coordinates and yeah, and then we just keep going. Archaeology is a way for us to go out and put that story back together again to be able to tell the story of the people that lived here, the people that worked here. Where were they from? Uh, what were the racial implications at the time? What was going on in, in this particular area? This is local history. and You don't get much more local than this. Almost everybody that worked here uh, went out and lived someplace in the greater south. It's pretty cool if you're the first person there to see it in, you know, from 80 years to a couple hundred years. Um, it's a pretty neat experience. Baxter's done his homework on the camp and the men who called it home. The CCC camp started in 1935, and there's actually two camps here. One, a military camp that is called Camp Hawthorne, and the other one is a state forestry camp called Camp Ferguson. The object of these particular camps then were to go out and 
retain and maintain this particular area to go out and improve drainage, to uh, build a park. Life in the camps was regimented. Meals, housing, and uniforms were provided, and the camps maintained a tight schedule. The men worked during the day and took classes in the evenings. They were paid $30 a month, most of which was sent home to their families. The people that went out and worked in the CCC camps, during the Great Depression, people had lost hope. They didn't see any way out of this. The Depression had been going on by the time we hit this particular camp, been going on for five years. There was no upside to this. No one saw that this was ever going to end. The CCC camp here gave these men hope and gave them a purpose, gave them something to look forward to, gave them food, gave them a uniform, made them feel important. Once you feel that you are important, that you are moving forward in life, you're 18 years old, that, that's, that's a major thing that happens in your life. That's a major change. Uh, once you believe that you can do something, you build all the things that we've seen out here. You now know that you can do almost anything. The crews left a lasting legacy on Kings Mountain State Park. The Civilian Conservation Corps built the park in the uh, mid to late 30s. The park property is about 7,000 acres. And it's park manager Shea Joyner's job to keep it all running. The state park is where folks can come to camp. Uh, we have two lakes. We have over 60 miles of trails, from hiking trails to uh, equestrian trails. We rent uh, fishing boats, paddle boats on either of our lakes. So you can fish the lakes, you can paddle the lakes. And then we also have a little history here with what the Civilian Conservation Corps built. There are over 81 buildings that are on the National Historic Register because they were built by the CCC. Inside the park, the Civilian Conservation Corps' work stands out at Lake Crawford. Down these stone steps, built by hand, you'll find the historic old bathhouse. And let's not forget Lake Crawford. The workers constructed this massive dam using thousands of stones which they'd quarried from the park in order to create the lake. All these projects are examples of the CCC's legacy in the park and a legacy now coming full circle with the new equestrian trail. That access trail, the CCC trail, allows us to complete that story. And uh, you know, we've always told, told the story with the bathhouse and the dam and the the facilities that are here, but access to the original CCC camp uh, now allows us to tell the story that this is where these guys live, this is the kind of lifestyle they lived while they were here building this park. This, this job is so rewarding because, you know, every time we talk to a visitor, every time we experience that, we see the product of what we do. We see that the intent of the CCC is still being carried on this many years later. What I do per, for a profession is, is make memories. And when you actually experience the people coming out and, and they're in, in the process of making those memories with the facilities that we take care of, if that doesn't make you well up with pride, then you know I would, I would have to say I'm in the wrong business. You can see examples of New Deal projects in many national and state parks across the United States. But there's more to the story. When we think about CCC camps, when we think about the WPA, we think about the Blue Ridge Parkway, this phenomenal federally funded project that's still intact, that's still with us, that so many people enjoy. But uh, folks have to realize that it wasn't limited to these big projects off in the mountains. Stuart Gray works for the Charlotte Mecklenburg Historic Landmarks Commission. He estimates there are around 20 different projects in the community constructed by New Deal agencies. Of the projects that were from the WPA or from the other relief agencies, um, American Legion Memorial Stadium was probably one of the biggest and most prominent the stadium opened in 1936 at the corner of Charlottetown Avenue and 7th Street. Over the years, there have been modifications and additions, but at field level, one key feature remains, the stadium's distinctive rock wall. It was uh, of such a model of here is an improvement for the city, for the community, 
and we are going to build it for the benefit of the citizens and we will, are also building it because it's going to stimulate the economy. So uh, the American Legion Memorial Stadium is, is almost poster child for that type of relief work. Across the street from Memorial Stadium, the WPA also built the baseball grandstand at Independence Park. Nearby, another example, the Palmer Fire School on 7th Street. According to Gray, the New Deal funded the building, but firefighters provided the labor. Other properties include the 1936 and 1937 WPA hangar out at the airport, at the Charlotte Airport. That was probably pivotal in the development of Douglas Airport, to have the federal government come in and help fund what I'm sure at the time was a state-of-the-art hangar. And it may have really cemented uh, the current airport's location, because before that, we had airports scattered throughout the county. This heavy bronze plaque once hung on the WPA hangar. It's now part of the Carolina Aviation Museum collection. But where we see the biggest effect of the New Deal agencies probably is in school construction. That started early in the Roosevelt administration with an agency called the Civil Works Administration. Gray says one of the best examples is the gym at Long Creek Elementary School in Huntersville. It's a fantastic building. It's a brick building. Uh, you go inside, the backboards were crafted locally. There's a fireplace built at half court. And again, that tells a lot of story about this Long Creek Gymnasium. It was built for and by the community. Another prominent Civil Works Administration project in Charlotte, the Mint Museum on Randolph Road. From the entrance, it's hard to recognize the building's Depression-era construction. But from the Eastover neighborhood side, the original 1930s architecture truly contrasts with the museum's modern entrance. We hope that when people see the Palmer Fire School or when people see the grandstand at Independence Park, you know, we can educate them and remind them that the Great Depression was an important historical event and that these are artifacts of that event and demonstrate, you know, how things changed during the Great Depression. After the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, the United States entered World War II. The nation shifted from rebuilding its economy to fighting the war. But according to Baxter, New Deal programs like the Civilian Conservation Corps gave the nation an edge. The reason that I think these camps are important is it tells us how did people survive during that time frame? What did they do? How did they learn? How did they go to school? How did they go out and become the greatest generation? Because the people that worked in this camp are the people that are going to win World War II. This was a foundation for all of those folks. These camps were a foundation for our war effort. Without these camps, our, our life would have been much less rich after the Second World War. And it's quite possible, without these camps and without this organization, without the military getting the practice of going out and training young men, thousands of them, that maybe we wouldn't have won World War II. While programs like the WPA and the CCC ended decades ago, their work continues to benefit communities across the nation. Today, there's a renewed push for similar programs to provide employment for young adults while making improvements to our parks and public lands. The distinctive crack of steel striking stone fills this otherwise peaceful spot in the Uwari National Forest. A small crew armed with sledgehammers shatter large rocks into smaller pieces which they use for erosion control on this equestrian trail. A short hike down the trail. Last week we built a water bar and it rained last night and it turns out our water bar was not successful. So we are rebuilding. <laughs> um, now what we just did is we just um, dug a trench. We're gonna fill that in with gravel so there's a clean drainage line. Similar to the 1930s CCC programs, the work they do is strenuous. While some college students take the summers off, when Raleigh native Kayla Gann told her friends about her summer plans. 
They thought I was crazy. <laughs> they um weren't they weren't expecting me to actually do something like this. My major is laboratory animal science. So usually they would have thought that I would be somewhere in a lab or doing something else, but they, they didn't expect me to be out here. So Gant and the rest of the crew signed up for a summer of hard yet rewarding labor. They're part of the North Carolina Youth Conservation Corps, which hires youth between the ages of 16 to 24. NCYCC Project Director Jan Pender. Because we are now living at a time when more and more people don't get outdoors at all and they can't appreciate or value the outdoors unless they're in it. So part of our objective is to introduce them to the outdoors so they can learn to value it. This kind of program allows young people to work outside and still get paid and get involved in conservation work um, while having sort of like an entry level summer job. A job that pays around 10 bucks an hour. The NCYCC partners with a larger nationwide program called the 21st Century Conservation Service Corps, which connects youth conservation corps around the country with partners like the National Forest Service. The 21 CSC is the 21st Century Conservation Service Corps, which is the legacy of the Civilian Conservation Corps. So it's taking those same goals that were put in front of the young men of the 1930s, and now we have co-ed Conservation Corps doing the same kinds of work for the natural resource agencies and for the public. They improve and restore trails so that those trails are maintained, they are available to people, they are there for future generations. They do facility repairs at some of our parks. That includes painting, putting in benches, building amphitheaters, things that the public can use while they're there. Great thing, but I do that sometimes. I'm but the NCYCC's goals extend beyond landscaping and construction work. The program puts a priority on diversity. The crews are a melting pot of gender, race, and socioeconomic background. While most of their day focuses on physical work, there's a strong emphasis on developing leadership skills. Charlotte native Carolyn Martin. I grew up um, in North Carolina being outside all the time. My family would go to the beach and we go to the mountains and go hiking a lot. Um, and so I've always really had a passion for conservation in North Carolina. And I was on the first NCYCC crew in 2013 and um, we built a new bike trail in the Croatan National Forest. Now she supervises several NCYCC crews across the state. Usually working for a small portion of the day with them or sharing a meal with them and maybe sitting in on an educational lesson. NCYCC integrates leadership training into the program. These young men and women spend an hour each workday learning critical skills for their future. So the young people are earning a paycheck, but we also want them get to, getting ready for a full-time career. And that means building leadership skills, communication skills, teamwork skills, and learning to get along with other people, because that's a big part of having a successful job in the future. But these young adults aren't the only ones who benefit from the program. According to the U.S. Forest Service, the Uari National Forest covers 52,000 acres, with nearly 750,000 visitors each year. With miles of equestrian, hiking, and motorized trails, there's a lot of maintenance to perform with increasingly tighter budgets. That's why partnerships between conservation corps like NCYCC and the National Forest Service are critical to keeping public lands maintained and ready for future generations. The Great Depression and the many New Deal programs of the 1930s left an undeniable stamp on our nation. Well, first of all, we have all of these amazing state parks that are produced all the way through the country. In North and South Carolina, most of our state parks are actually started during this particular time frame. Uh, the second part is it is tremendously effective in going out and stopping the erosion on these farms. So it makes the farmland much, much more valuable than it was before. I think thirdly, it goes out and provides roads into areas that we didn't have roads to go into. I mean, that was the big change about the Great Depression and the New Deal. It changed the way government worked. Government no longer was this 
uh, isolated legislature in Washington that simply made laws. With the advent of the Great Depression and the development of the New Deal, government changed completely. And suddenly with government, through their uh, relief agencies, were intimately involved with people's lives by building local parks, building ball fields, building school buildings, improving the roads that folks needed to drive on to get to work or to, to walk on or to take their crops to market. People should care because it's about them. It's about their history. It's about our history. These people did remarkable things. Thank you for watching A Trail of History here on PBS Charlotte. of PBS Charlotte.